Hello, everyone. Uh, let me show the screen here. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for joining this space. Uh, this is my first talk in, in English, so uh, please be patient with me. And um, remember, this talk is for you, so you can interrupt me at, at any time if you want to ask questions. Uh, um, um, well, let's just start. Um, well, uh, I am Ivan. I am a researcher at NetLabs uh, Uruguay and been tasked recently to learn about this thing called large language models in France and, and later more things about it. Uh, do everyone know what is uh, inferencing and what is a large language model? Is there, is there anyone that doesn't know what it is? Uh, it's similar like uh, ChatGPT, etc. And you ask questions or give a text and, and he completes the text or answers the questions, okay? Uh, I am still a beginner in this topic, but anyway, I, I, I think maybe I can share some of the bits that I, I really learned. Um, I don't have a data science background. I was an old programmer <laughs> back in the days uh, and more recently a systems administrator. And uh, well, what I saw from this is that there's a lot of things to learn <laughs> and a lot. And these are some of the things that uh, there is to learn. There's quite a lot. I, I'm not going to, to tell uh, everything. Uh, but uh, there are several models, parameters, etc. The parameters is uh, the amount of knowledge that the model has, so it's quite uh, an important concept. Uh, if you have a seven billion parameters model, it's a bit naive, but if you have a 17 billion parameters, it starts to get interesting. <laughs> and there's uh, several concepts to learn, etc. Um, this talk is not about this. <laughs> Um, but as you, as you see, it's a very extensive uh, topic <laughs> to be getting into. And um, well, at the end, you conquer the, the world, I think. Uh, so um, yeah. So uh, what I needed was like um, define a, a mission, have a, a, um, a clearly defined scope to start learning because uh, you can't just write notes and read stuff all the time and, 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 and then start working on it. You need to uh, mix things when you learn, uh, have something to concrete to do uh, while you learn. So um, I defined the mission and the scope and, and um, I, we focus uh, on the current clients that we have that are interested in these things and, and these clients they don't, uh, at first, need a, a lot of concurrency. I mean, there will be only a few users using the, the system. And, and many of them prefer on-premises systems, I mean, local servers, uh, because of data sovereignty and, and some other things they, they don't like or can do with the cloud. And, um, and also, on the other side, we, we also uh, try to recommend our clients to use the cloud as an utility provider and don't use, um, sometimes it's good to use the, the all uh, the managed solutions that the cloud has, but uh, in, in sometimes you want, you prefer to have the um, manage yourself, the solution, and then be able to switch clouds easily. So we, we always um, point the, the, the clients on that direction. And, they, these clients have the possibility to pay some hardware to run uh, YAMA 2, uh, 7 billion parameters. So they have some budget that allows them to do that. So the mission was to, to define how to run and which hardware to run uh, large language models inference. Uh, so that, that was the, the mission that, that I set up to. And, and the plan to accomplish the mission was to find benchmarks and characteristics of inference executors in order to to appropriately uh, and recommend our clients uh, what executor to, to use, what engine to use. To run the, even the same model, you have different ways to, to run it. Uh, and also um, getting to know the hardware to use these, um, these executors. I mean, how much hardware is needed, we, we don't want to spend too much, but also not, not too little. <laughs> 
And well, I found out uh, a repository by Hamel Hussein uh, and through his blog that they had, he had several benchmarks already that were very, very interesting. So that was very similar to what uh, we needed uh, regarding low concurrency. He was benchmarking on low concurrency, but uh, focused on, on small, non, small hardware that uh, doesn't allow uh, really to run a big model like Llama, Llama 2, uh, 7 billion parameters. So uh, we decided to use his repo as base and, and contribute back and, and did a fork for that to prepare the, the pull requests. And, and well, we did <laughs> several, 11 to be exact. And, and well, we didn't have any comment, but it's okay. I mean, I, he seems busy. And also, more in the later days, I, I found another repo with web charts that, that was more similar to what we are doing because they, they use containers, etc., which is something that we prefer. But it's okay, we are fine. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, to start uh, learning about the things and, and testing things out, you, you don't use a, a, a big item that is very costly. I mean, you, you start small and, and cheap. Uh, so you start with a small model, actually. So in that case, we decided to start with Yama 2, uh, 7 million parameters, uh, which requires about 15 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, there's a GitHub repository, but which is pretty neat to, to learn about the numbers of uh, the large language models and how to calculate RAM and, uh, and other needs. That is pretty cool. Take a look at it later. Um, and well, we wanted to run the models with bfloat16, which is a new data type that has a bigger exponent and, uh, and, and that allows to, to have a greater range of values. Even if you have less precision on the exact value, this is uh, better for inference. So that restricted a bit the hardware to CUDA 8 or later uh, hardware in the case of NVIDIA, of course. And so we, we found we need hardware that is unpaired, based or data. And well, we found a server on AWS that is pretty cheap in order to develop and, and get experience on it. So we used it. Um, we didn't look at other clouds and we end up using 220 gigabytes to test several executors and conversions of the models, etc. So you have like a ballpark, if you want to start like this, uh, you already have I mean, the, the baseline. Um, and why NVIDIA, you may, you may ask. And well, in, in December, at least, uh, th there was not much documentation on these executors on how to run them with AMD hardware. And well, that, that, was, uh, that gets improving with, with time. And now in April, there's much better documentation. For example, if you go to Hugging Face uh, Transformers Library, you have uh, sometimes uh, options to see how to run it with uh, ROCM of AMD and how to run it with CUDA of NVIDIA where, when there's differences. So it's, it's really improving a lot nowadays. Um, but still, there are some reports of instabilities on the drivers, etc. cetera. So, um, and, and also another restriction with AMD is that it's difficult to find servers in the public clouds in order to test things before actually buying the hardware. So, uh, but on the other side, uh, I, I think it's, it's something good from AMD to be so open with the firmware and, and drivers, etc. So uh, as a free software fanatic myself, I really wish I could use the, the hardware and I'm looking forward to using it in the future because it's actually what I personally prefer. Uh, so yeah, we are hoping to get things well at the end of this year. I think it will be pretty, pretty much better than, than before. Uh, there are other hardware specific accelerators for inferencing, etc. But you need hardware that, that, that has support and that is really, I mean, if you are going to buy the hardware for the clients, uh, you, you need to stand um, alongside your recommendations. So, so you, you can recommend things that are very recent or that you're, you are not so sure that you can provide good support for that hardware. So if you're going to buy, buy hardware, you want something that is very well tested and well known. So, uh, well, so the, the, the tests, uh, regarding the tests that, that, that the, we, are, uh, we have been uh, using, um, we see that uh, in the community, there's a lot of uh, Conda environments usage, uh, but 
since I, I have a background on systems administrator, uh, I tend to use containers for everything. It's like a, my hammer. <laughs> and so uh, I, I wanted something not so Python specific and, and more flexible in order to the things that you can mix and match inside a container, they, they is much flex, flexible than Conda. So uh, we even use different Linux distributions depending on the executor. Uh, some executors, we, we couldn't and run it with Rocket Linux, for example, and we had to use uh, Ubuntu. So that flexibility from containers uh, is pretty neat. And, and so we decided to use uh, Rocket Linux line with Polman using the container device interface which is the way that allows to access the, the hardware directly of the GPUs. And it doesn't have any overhead, which is very important. We, we don't want to lose any performance on this. And, and also we have many clients with OpenShift and Kubernetes already. So this is pretty, pretty similar to that. Uh, so we started doing containers for uh, most of Hamel's benchmarks from that repository and starting contributing back those containers. Uh, and also we added some, uh, several benchmarks, new benchmarks to the, to the repo uh, with containers too. Um, the benchmarks do, do uh, to, the, to the inference executor a total of nine questions. And, but the first one is only used for a warm up. These questions are different. It's not the same question each time. So there's no possibility of catching on the executor. And the first question, of course, is a warm up. It's not included on the results. For the other questions, we measure the, the, the time and, and, and see the actual response if, it's, if it seems correct. And we limit the, um, the response to a limit of uh, 200 tokens. Tokens is uh, similar to words. Uh, it's a bit less than a word, but it's, it's nearly a word. So. Uh, the first thing that we need, uh, any questions up to, up to now? You have any questions? No? It's okay? Okay, let's continue then. Uh, well, uh, you may see a lot of documentation from NVIDIA and how to set up a server, etc. You actually need to like look in three different uh, sites and documentations. Uh, it's a, a bit um, confusing, but in the end, it all ends up just being these simple comments. This is incredible. I mean, uh, I, I think I, 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 I spent like a couple of days uh, figuring this out, but it's simple at the end. So you just in install some packages, uh, you add the CUDA repo, and then install the container toolkit, which is the one that, that allows to use the container device in, uh, interface to pass the GPUs inside the containers that we want and the CUDA drivers. The fabric manager is useful if you use several multi-GPUs setups. If you don't use it, you, uh, you use only a single GPU, you can just use the CUDA drivers. Uh, and we use also DKMS, which is a way to auto-compile the kernel module of uh, NVIDIA. Uh, each time we install a new kernel, uh, and, and that's why we use EP release the, re the repo because there is, uh, that's where there's the DKMS. We recommend to use the DKMS because uh, sometimes the, the pre-compiled model is not ready for the kernel you want to upgrade. So you, you end up waiting for maybe critical upgrades on the kernel. So it's better to just use DKMS and compile the kernel yourself. Um, well, uh, yeah, what I already explained this year. Um, yeah, and NVIDIA should improve the things. I mean, it's amazing the, the amount of documentation they have and the places where is the documentation leaves a lot to be desired. It can be much simpler. <laughs> if someone from NVIDIA is here, please call me. Uh, well, but uh, there are some things that the packages themselves don't do, and we need to do this. Uh, we need to build a, a service to generate the, the actual CDI file um, because the, the packages don't do it. They, they don't use uh, any, for example, uh, UDEV rules or anything like that to auto-generate the configuration when a GPU comes up. So we need to do that ourselves and enable some services too. Uh, the fabric manager, of course, only, only needed if you are using it. Otherwise, you don't need it. 
And then, well, the, the, obliga the, the obligatory reboot of the server <laughs> to testing out and, 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 and see if it works. So after you reboot, it, it may explode, but let's taste, taste it. <laughs> so, well, click success. And yeah, the, the way to, to test it is actually running a container. And there are some pre-built containers from NVIDIA, which has all the packages that with the correct versions inside them. So we can use uh, that. And this is the command for passing the, the, the old GPUs to the container using the CDI interface. And NVIDIA SMI is a command to actually look at the hardware that you have. This is on the small server. And if you see this output, everything is OK. If not, then <laughs> OK. Quick success. OK, so questions up to now? This is pretty simple uh, to set up the server, at least, and running containers. OK. So I mean, what is a good speed for inferencing? Uh, and this is very subjective, but uh, our aim was the, OK, uh, GPT-4 is usable, uh, chat GPT with GPT-4. So uh, baseline speed that we should aim, aim for is the, its, its speed, which is tolerable. So 26 tokens per second seems uh, something reasonable for, to aim for in the hardware aspect. Um, OK. so. We started doing the benchmarks, uh, and we updated the benchmarks on April, so we have fresh data. And well, the, here is the versions and the different um, executors that we have that we tested. And what is important when using the Hugging Face Transformers API is, at least in Ampere, we we found out that uh, if you don't uh, change the D type, the um, uh, when using the, the API, it, it, it consumes like twice the RAM. I, I don't know why, the VRAM, the GPU RAM. And, but, but also we, we want to use VFLOG system in all computations because it, it has, it has uh, better quality. So be sure to use the parameter when use the from pre-trained method if you use it. Um, we tested also C-Translate 2, which is not so well known. Uh, and it seems a bit short staffed. They, they took their time to update from CUDA 11 to 12, which was surprising for me. But they did it in the end, luckily. But yeah, they, they, um, it's short staffed. It seems short staffed, uh, but it's pretty good at the end. And then something a bit experimental, which is MLC. But it's an interesting project. Uh, and, and, and it's getting mature. But from December to April, they, they changed the name, and we had to readapt all the benchmarks with it. <laughs> but uh, now I think it's going to be stable. They also have like a optimization level that you can select on MLC, which is the the default one, which is uh, pretty stable uh, according to them. And then you can like enable another uh, level of optimization, like the compiler when you use O2 and or O3. Well, they have an O3. <laughs> to uh, optimize more the, the engine, but they say that those optimizations are a bit experimental, so be careful with that. Uh, but it got a bit slower than in December, so that was a strange. Uh, but it, it could be one of the fast, fastest projects if, if you enable all the optimizations. So when they get there, I, I have hard hope for them. And there's a, the well-known uh, having face text generation interface, which is a server and an API server. And they changed the license for a bit. It wasn't a so open license. And then they reverted uh, recently. And now we have a, a, an Apache 2 license again. Thanks for doing that, having face. And then we have the, the, the fully, fully NVIDIA solution which is the NVIDIA Triton, Triton inference server that you can use several different backends on it. Uh, but we tested it with NVIDIA's backend, which is the TensorRT LLM, uh, is the, the NVIDIA backend too. So we have a, fully, a full NVIDIA solution to test. It's open. It's not proprietary software. Pretty neat. And, but yeah, it, it was very, very difficult to set up. It's not easy. 
if you want to make it run, just talk with me. I, I, I will try to put all the recipes on the repo, <laughs> but it, it was pretty difficult. BLLM is very well known, very popular in the community. It's pretty stable. Uh, don't look at the version, it's, it's stable, it's pretty good. And they also are always on the edge. I mean, if there's a new algorithm or op optimization, they are one of the, f the first to actually implement it. So it's pretty good. You can't go wrong with them. There's a, a also a very interesting project that is similar to TGI, which is TGW. It has a web user interface. That you have a, a chat, but also you have a, an interface to train models, etc. Uh, it's very complete, the, the web interface, but, but also you can disable the web interface and then just run an OpenAI compatible API with it and test several backends through it. So it's pretty good for that. And we tested several of its backends. Power Infer is an interesting project because um, it, it doesn't run the, the, the model exactly as, as usual. It, it has a, a retraining of the model. And, and, and then it has some statistics from the model that try to find uh, which weights or parameters are the most used. And for the ones that, that are most used, it, it tries to put them all on the GPU. And, and there's the, the cold parameters, the, the ones that aren't frequently used. Here, uh, it runs it on the CPUs. Uh, and, and so with that, you can actually run bigger models that don't fit on the GPU memory using a bit of the CPU, trying to put all the, the most important weights and parameters on the GPU for speed. Uh, so it's, it's pretty interesting. It has a drawback that, that, that uh, for the case of the of JAMA 2 seven, 17 billion parameters, it, 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 they say that they have a loss of quality because they, they couldn't uh, actually retrain the, the model fully uh, with all the quality that they want. Uh, it seems to be some money issues that you need to, to have a lot of com to computation to, pre to calculate all the things that it needs. Uh, so it, it's not so fair to compare power infer with the others because it doesn't have the exact same quality, but it's very interesting, so it's good to have. Uh, so, uh, let's see what we got from the tests, okay? Well, this graph, thanks Federico Varela for the graphs. <laughs> well, we see that power inferred actually is pretty fast, but ignore it a bit because it's not so fair. But there's a bunch of, um, of executors that, that are actually pretty the same. I mean, they, they have roughly the, the same speed. And, and then we have the, um, the G TGI uh, web that uh, it run uh, a, a bit slower. So uh, it could be my fault. Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't expect that at all. But uh, maybe the conclusion from this is they are pretty similar with, between each other, at least for small models in small hardware, okay? So these are the speeds, uh, 32 tokens per second. And, and then, uh, well, we also got some statistics about GPU usage. Uh, the, the most important maybe is how much video RAM or GPU RAM do we need to run the, the model? Remember, this is YAMA to uh, 7 billion parameters only. So uh, for, for many projects, they, they can run with uh, 14 gigabytes only. Some others need like 14, 15, 16. In the case of BLLM and TGI, inference server, they, when they start up, they say like they use uh, some memory for the key very catchy and, and, and try to to pre prepare memory for uh, multiple batches coming into the server and run them in parallel, etc. So it's not actually that you need for running BLLM 20 gigabytes. You can run it with less, like 16 gigabytes. But if you have more memory, uh, he will use it for these caches, OK? So it's not so bad as it looks here, at least. And then another interesting metric, for example, is that the, the VRAM bandwidth when while inferencing. And so what, what, what can we look here is that they are all like um, um, bottlenecked in the, in the RAM, in the VRAM speed. So if you have a, 
uh, a better uh, memory subsystem in the, in the GPUs, we probably could have more speed from these models. Uh, and then also the, the, the GPU seems highly used, but, but since we have both, and I, I was researching a bit the, about this, and it's pretty common to have actually the, the VRAM be the bottleneck and, and not so much the GPU. Um, okay, so we also measure the, the, the CPU's uh, RAM memory usage. Some models, they load uh, a layer of the model and then the layer gets transferred to the VRAM and the memory reused for the next layer and uploaded to the GPU and only need the, the size of a single layer uh, in, the, in the in main RAM of the CPU, but others just keep the whole model in, in, in the CPU RAM. Don't know why exactly. Uh, and then, well, how much CPU we, we, CPUs we need, and except for power inferred, uh, this percentage is like they use uh, one or two CPUs at max, and, and then nothing else. Uh, I mean, this is the, the all the the, one, uh, the 100 max CPU usage is one or two CPUs being used fully, and the others being idle. I, I don't know if, I, if it's a polling of the GPUs or something like that, DC polling, I don't know why they use it. Power inferred, it actually really uses the, the CPUs. I, I think it's avoiding the hyper threads, only using the, the real cores. Uh, and because it, it doesn't use the GPU only, as I said, it uses also the parts of the model running in the CPU. Uh, supposedly only the, the, the the not so used parameters, not so much used parameters on the CPU, but it's actually using half your CPU uh, capacity. So, in case you use power in infer, you, you need a server with a good CPU also. But for the others, you actually don't need so much CPU. Uh, you need, you better spend your money on GPUs, okay? Um, well, so this is the, the conclusion that I already said. Uh, MLC is actually pretty good at, at hardware usage. Um, there are VLM and TGA already said. Okay. This all said already. Oh. There was a, a couple of benchmarks that we spent uh, some time and back and forth with Eric uh, trying to make them work. They, they are pretty interesting because there's. Um, some work towards uh, building, uh, I mean, the, the most common frameworks currently are, are done with uh, Python, using PyTorch or, or TersonFlow. Uh, um, and, and now there's uh, some, some people that, that want to shift a bit to a, a more efficient runtime with uh, Rust, for example, and there's a push for that. And Hugging Face has his own port of uh, um, to Rust of the inferencing engine called Candle. So I, I wanted to, to find some benchmark that has an API. Uh, so I, I found two from the same author, which is pretty weird, but uh, both of them had issues and, and couldn't actually run at the end. But we tried to run them. Um, and of course, uh, we didn't have time to test everything, and Burn is another project using Rust, and the others uh, I didn't look to, so much. TinyGrad, I think, is using also Rust. But yeah, um, there are some, some things that we, we can work, still work on it. Um, so well, uh, questions up to now? Anybody? No? OK, let's go move forward then. Um, so we need to choose hardware to run YAMA2, 70 uh, billion parameters, which is bigger. So uh, we, we don't want just to find the, the, the fastest hardware or the, the, the most expensive hardware. So uh, first, first of all, we need to know, OK, um, how much uh, VRAM do we need? And according uh, to the calculations, you need about uh, 156 gigabytes of VRAM or GPU RAM to run it. Um, and 
before we, we buy a, an expensive hardware, uh, it's good if, if we can validate it somewhere. So uh, the public clouds are, are pretty good with that. It, it's something that uh, we sometimes do, trying to run a workload on a public cloud, even if the, if the client wants the, the hardware on premise. Uh, and after the testing they could in the public cloud, several different combinations, we design a, an on-premise hardware with the hardware provider, and we run it on-premise, on uh, making sure that before buying the hardware, you, you can run the, the project well. So this is the same. Um, and well, then <laughs> there's an issue, of course. I mean, I, I could find uh, hardware prices in Uruguay, but I guess you aren't too much interested in, in, in the prices of hardware in Uruguay. So uh, yeah, I tried to find uh, hardware prices for the United States, uh, but many hardware providers they don't publish prices, but Dell has some. So thank you Del, for that. So, well, um, going to the website, you can select from several different servers and then customize the, the fetch features, etc. It's pretty good. It's actually a good interface. And, well, configuring servers, I, I found out that the, the cheapest you can go that you can also test in a public cloud is a server with eight NVIDIA L4 uh, GPUs that have 24 gigabytes each. Uh, and, and, and those video cards uh, are TCC $600,000 uh, in, in total. And we can use them or test them in the Google Cloud. Um, but we, are, we, we, we aren't pretty sure that these video cards will be uh, appropriate for running Shama 2, but we decided anyway to, to test them anyway because they don't have too much uh, memory bandwidth uh, and they don't have the NMB link, uh, link switches between them, so the communication goes everything through PC Express and it's not so fast. Uh, but let's test it anyway. Uh, so here's the server. Uh, it, uh, it costs uh, $65,000, which is not that much uh, for the clients that we have at least in mind. And there's the information, it has 24 cores, uh, some amount of RAM, it's not so much. Nowadays, 256 gigabytes, but it's okay for JAMA 2. Um, it has a bit, uh, a bit of a small uh, storage, but um, our, our clients mostly have um, storage area networks, etc. so they, they, they don't store things on the server, but for having uh, the models, it's, it's actually pretty good to have the, 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 the storage in the server because uh, it will load the models more faster, right? You have several gigabytes to, to load. If you need to reboot the, the server because of something exploded and you want to get up uh, online as, as fast as you can, so having the, the models uh, locally is important. So 800 gigabytes, it seems appropriate for that. Um, well, it has some connectivity, and we extended the warranty to five years, okay? So we, we pay a bit more to have a good warranty. It's just a lovely server. <laughs> so, who's the winner is? And we don't know. <laughs> uh, um, doing all the tests and getting acquainted with uh, inferencing and the different executors uh, took a lot of time. Uh, of the time that, that I, I had available to prepare for this talk. And so the, the latest test in the actual big hardware, big iron, was related to the end. And I didn't expect to have so much trouble with the, the clouds, but in the case of Google, I needed to increase the quota of L, L4 GPUs, NVIDIA L4 GPUs that we can use to eight, which is not that much. And I didn't expect to have that problem. And after two days, they declined the request. And we are even partners of them. <laughs> so it's okay, I'm fine. So let's find an alternative. And this is getting interesting because uh, 
there's not so much intersection between the, the hardware that was available to configure on, on the Dell website and the hardware that you have available on the clouds, on the, on the three main public clouds. Uh, so at the end, we, we settled for the Ace, NVIDIA A100 GPUs, which are uh, like an industry standard to, to run inferencing and also training. Uh, these aren't the latest one, but they are very capable. Um, so we decided to, to use that because the, the other options that we have on the Dell website were actually more expensive than the A100. And we found some in, the, in, in, in eBay. Uh, and, and why eBay? Because uh, on the Dell website, the, there's no availability of A100 A video cards. GPUs, so we, we we had to find the price some, somewhere, and but uh, these prices are for from good reputation providers in eBay at least. So um, not all are the same. The 18 uh, gigabytes uh, version is an improved version with a better performing memory subsystem, which is important. Um, so, well, we, we decided to use the 14G, 14G version because in AWS, the 18 gigabytes version is a, a preview and we don't have access to it, even if we are partners, we, but we are a small one. <laughs> so we decided to, okay, let's go with the 14 uh, gigabytes version. This should be easy. We can just launch the servers on AWS, right? Remember this. Uh, so uh, we, we are going to use four A100 uh, GPUs, which is a total of 320 uh, gigabytes memory. No, 116 memory, uh, gigabytes memory, sorry. Uh, so um, we also ask Dell directly if they can provide us with pricing for the NVIDIA uh, A100, but they require a, 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 a shipping address in the USA, a landline phone, and we don't have it. We, we are uh, a, a small company and we have cl uh, clients in the USA, but we don't want to bother them with this. So, okay, if you don't want to provide the pricing, it's okay, it's your choice. Um, so we removed the L4s from the Dell server and we added the eBay boat ones in it. And we also have some, some money for the NV, NV Link bridges, and it's about $72,000. So uh, the alternative is not so bad. It's actually pretty much faster than the previous one with the L4s. Uh, and so um, we found the, 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 the AWS server uh, to test it. Um, and we are going to restrict the, the amount of GPUs on AWS to only four. Um, it's just lovely. So let's taste it. So and the winner is now. No. <laughs> when we try to do that, um, when you try to launch the, the server, uh, is uh, nowadays it's, it's pretty common that uh, the, the error that you will get is that there is insufficient capacity to launch it. So that means that there, are, there aren't any servers available in that region. Uh, but okay, so uh, <laughs> what we learned uh, is that even the hyperscalers have issues securing the, uh, the AI hardware. There's so much demand that it's actually pretty difficult to, to find it. Uh, we tried for different times of day, et cetera, we couldn't. Uh, so we decided to use uh, different region, g regions. So uh, in not all regions have these GPUs. So you are restricted to only this list of regions. You don't have GP GPUs in any other region, not even California. <laughs> so um, we started from the nearest to the farthest. And you know we ended up launching a server on Seoul, uh, South Korea. <laughs> uh, that was actually the, the second, I mean, the, the previous to the last one <laughs> option that we had. I, I was pretty nervous with, with that. But finally, we could launch it. 
a bit more pricey, 50% <laughs> more, but at least we have a server. Um, so, well, when, when, when we launched the server, we, we, have, we started with errors, etc. That was because of the fabric manager that I didn't know you, you had to use, but I learned it. And, and then the downloading, etc. it takes time. Um, and also the, the first benchmark that we did, we did is, okay, let's start with something simple. The high interface transformer is actually very used uh, everywhere. So we didn't expect to have issues with that, but what we have it, you need to modify how you use the transformers API to, to accommodate multiple CPUs. So, um, we, we tried to fix it, but we could then. Then C Translate 2 worked after running it with MPI run. Uh, uh, so we, we decided to continue the next day, and the next day we couldn't launch the server. So, uh, my apologies. <laughs> we, we actually, um, we, we, we ran it out of time. Uh, so the winner is, and it's not the winner, it's the one that we could run before the, the, the time ran, ran it out for this talk. So I, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, it's actually very difficult to, to find the hardware, etc. It was way more time consuming than we expected, but we have at least a translate that ran at 23 tokens per second with Shama 270 billion parameters. Um, and one interesting aspect is that the GPU was uh, bottlenecking, but uh, not so much the, the RAM subsystem of the GPU, which I didn't expect. Maybe it's an inefficiency on C Translate 2. Uh, would have been nicer to, to compare like with BLLM, etc. Uh, also on the CPU side, you need like uh, all the memory for the for loading the, the model. After the, it gets loaded, the, the memory gets uh, lower to only 10 gigabytes, which is weird. Um, and for the compute, CPU compute, it didn't increase from before, so it's okay. Uh, but yeah, 23 tokens per second is, we think is acceptable, and we expect it to, be, to actually be a bit higher. And then uh, you also have, uh, the mixture of experts models that they, they only have, like, for example, in, in Mixtral, you have actually only uh, uh, 14 active, active parameters f per token. And actually, if the layers of the experts are on different GPUs, you can run them in parallel. Uh, so this is way more faster. So mixture of experts uh, models are the, the are the present actually, <laughs> so uh, if you are going to run a, a model, make sure that it's a mixture of experts. It wasn't so common when we started on December, but nowadays you have Mixtral and, and also the new Mixtral of 22 billion parameters per expert, which is pretty good. Um, and and maybe just in case, if you buy a server, try to have a server that has. The, um, a bit more CPU RAM than the GPU RAM you will have. Uh, well, so we are running out of time, sorry for that. Um, we try to calculate the, the, the cost of the server per hour and per minute uh, with these computations here. Um, we ended up um, seeing that the, the on-premises server is like $7 per hour. Uh, it compares favorably with the cloud. <laughs> very favorably, um, but uh, if you compare that with OpenAI, um, yeah, I mean, in, in the cost comparison, actually, uh, it's more convenient to use the OpenAI API. If you can live with some throttlings on their side, etc., that it doesn't always answer your questions, you can retry them, of course. Um, but yeah, you can also, if you have several concurrent users, uh, you, may, you can make the hardware be more, more um, on par with the cost of OpenAI, but uh, it's a bit unrealistic. You need more memory for that. So cost isn't a reason to actually use on-premises hardware, okay? At least uh, for now. 
uh, but yeah, there are some several reasons. Uh, I already mentioned that our clients, some are governmental, so they need the, da the data to be on Uruguay, for example. Uh, but also, you maybe want to be free from external providers. You, you have this hardware that will probably run for five years. You have a warranty, and you can use your model and, and, and execution there, and you will not have any, pr any surprises. I mean, they, they, went, they won, will not go uh, bankrupt or buy it by something, someone else, etc. Uh, maybe you want to have the, a fixed cost. I mean, you want to invest at first, and that's it. You don't want like surprises on the costs. Uh, and also, when you are doing a, a retrieval, retrieval augmented generation, you have uh, like several round trips to the uh, large, large, large language um, uh, model executor and to the different agents, etc. And this back and forth, maybe it's better to have it locally on, on your data center. Um, so that, that could be a reason. The API throttlings is important, and that could be a reason too. So testing LLMs is very, very time consuming, uh, like expect 10 times more than you estimated. Uh, the documentation sometimes is obsolete. Sometimes it's a bit incomplete or with unclear examples. Uh, sometimes it's spread out, like in the NVIDIA case. <laughs> um, and yeah, sometimes what you test on a single GPU doesn't run on a multiple, multiple GPU setup. So be aware of that. Uh, don't compile CUDA kernels. <laughs> it takes ages. Um, also another issue is that the containers end up being pretty big. Uh, with Rust, this is much better actually. That's a good reason to, to switch to, to a Rust-based solution. Uh, and there are several issues that you can run, uh, uh, run to, like lacking RAM, etc. Or also, when compiling, you, you may run out of RAM. Um, well, models need space. Uh, we hope for AMD to try to alleviate this problem on the GPU scarcity uh, issue, which is very real, very real. Um, you can reserve usage slots, but there's a queue and you need to wait days in order to have the hardware that you reserve it. Uh, there's an agenda. Uh, maybe your cloud provider doesn't even allow you to use GPUs. The GPUs you need at least. So, but in the end, on-premises uh, inferencing uh, with a GPT 3.5 level quality with open models is actually possible. And the, the, the cost of the hardware is not that much. I think it's reasonable, uh, at least for low concurrency. Um, and, and, and also, in the, the experience that we have, really containers help it out. Don't be afraid to run GPUs uh, with containers. It's actually pretty easy. It's what I've shown at the first uh, moments of the, the talk. Uh, it's actually pretty easy, so there's no reason to not use them. They, they don't have any overhead. Uh, well, you need to say what CPUs you can do it smartly with the upper threads. Uh, there's an example of how to run a, a benchmark in our script. We are going to push the, all the code to the repo, of course. Um, a, a run, an example run of the ben benchmark. This is how you can run inferencing in, in a container manually. Just to learn. <laughs> uh, and this is also lit already. There's a recent launch of Mistral 22 billion parameters. That is pretty interesting. <laughs> and so we need more hardware for that. Uh, one thing that, we, that will probably happen is that you maybe buy your server and, and be in love with it. Uh, hi, I can use this uh, model uh, fully with all the quality on the, on the server. But then in, in a couple of months, there's another model with more uh, RAM requirements that that doesn't run on your hardware, don't worry, you maybe can quantize it at 8 and then NF4 and, and have some good quality anyway. So that's a way to make the server uh, be useful for, for longer. Uh, this is a fast moving space. There's a synergy between models, software, and hardware that 
uh, is made tailor made for this software. So when one of them improves something, the rest also, there's a synergy, it's amazing. Uh, well, the next steps is to load everything and try to use instructed models and not a mix, etc. Um, and we'll, we would love to have a client that is uh, open to let us do benchmarks uh, from time to time and publish them on, on, on the internet because it's something that there are some benchmarks, but there's not so much uh, a comprehensive one, easy to see. Uh, maybe try to contribute on this other repo or start a new repo, we, we don't know. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can spend a, a couple of minutes, so I don't know if you have any questions. Somebody? No? Yes? You? Yeah, it's another way to measure it, the latency, like 32 milliseconds, for example, per token. But I think it's easier to, uh, to reason about uh, tokens per second as maybe seeing words per second. Uh, it's a bit easier to, to, to see, like imagine how fast it is than it is uh, a time for a single token. Ah, time to first token, no, I didn't measure that, no. No, 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 no. The, um, for C Translate 2, that is the one that we run on multiple GPUs. Uh, it's uh, for all the, C the GPUs that we have. I mean, we have the maximum sing single GPU usage and the inference GPU, so it was pretty balanced, all the four GPUs. 70 eh? Seven, 70 billion, yeah. Ah, for 7B, yes, we, we, we have only, they are single uh, GPUs, but it's uh, the same program that generates the graph. So you, you have like, uh, I mean, these are all the same because uh, the, the single GPU and the average of all the GPUs is the same because there's only one. Yeah, but since it's the same script. Just confirm my understanding, 7B, this is in a single GPU. 7B in a single GPU, yes. The 70, yes, in the four GPUs. You, you can't uh, run it on a single GPU with, without quantization and such, yes. And, well, I, I guess we need to finish, but any other question, final question? No? Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks so much. <laughs>